he is expected to be able to hit a target at a distance of 100 yards. Can you guys think of something today It's about 100 yards long? Football field. Football field, right? I can hit a target the size of a person a football field away. That target's gonna be hit with a lead ball about an ounce and a half in weight, then anywhere between 73 to 80 caliber. That bullet is intended to penetrate armor or to kill a horse. You can imagine what they would do to an unarmored human being. It's a very powerful weapon. And it does not take a lot of training. The men who are coming here, or at least a lot of them, are going to be soldiers. But some of them are also going to be laborers and tradesmen. How many of y'all seen the blacksmith or the carpenters or the cooks or the makers or any of those people today? Did you? I have. They don't have military, military training back in England. Those men would have done one job their entire life, and that's what they would be good at. But by the time they get to Virginia, they're at war with the natives, and every man is going to be required to learn how to fight. They're going to learn how to use a musket, because it doesn't take all that long to learn to use a musket. And they're going to fight against their enemies who are here in Virginia, or who might be coming to Virginia. Who might attack them? The Indians. The Indians. Spain and the Indians. Maybe I'll shout out Indians, but she got the one that was a little more difficult. No, Spain. Thanks. While Spain oh. never actually comes to Virginia, they do prove to be a threat because the Spanish are telling the English they're coming to Wetsonite. The they actually scout the Virgin Virginia twice. So there is certainly a Spanish threat. Against Spain, you're going to go up against people using muskets, wearing armor, and riding horses. Conveniently, this weapon has the same range as those muskets. This weapon kills horses. This weapon goes through armor. So it's a useful weapon to have. Against the Powhatans, what weapon are they using? Bow and arrow. A bow and arrow. And they've trained since they were six or seven to learn how to use that bow and arrow effectively. They are amazing warriors. So if you're an Englishman, you only have two weeks of training, you want a weapon that can match or exceed what they have. Because you certainly don't have their level of training. So if you're a common laborer or tradesman, you get a musket. You can shoot a distance of how far? Football. That's twice the range of the bow, which has only effective range of around 40. The pouts are shooting stone or bone-tipped arrows. You can go through the musket or go through the uh, armor, but can the pouts and arrow go through armor? So you wear your armor. You have armor on. You have your musket. But can you do anything? Is, is that going to be any good for you unless you know how to use it? You have to know how to use it. So you bring gentlemen and officers, members of the upper class, who can teach you how to fight. And those men are going to be important because the musket has one major weakness. You might have noticed it as I was starting my demonstration. Load, load. Right? I have to reload, and reloading takes a little while. It takes me 20 or 30 seconds to load. A pouch can do it in five, uh, five or six seconds. So Musketeer doesn't fight by himself. He's learned how to fight as part of a group, a company of 50 men, organized in rows of 10, five rows deep. The first rank fires, the second rank, then the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And by the time you're back to the first rank, what do they have time to do? Reload. Reload. Now the whole company's firing every five or six seconds, firing 10 <laughs> shots each, and each of those 10 shots is able to kill a man 100 yards away. Do the paladins want to come directly towards that? No. They'd rather hide in the woods, shoot their arrows at anyone who's not suspecting them. So maintain a constant 24-hour watch in the fort, and only travel by boat as best you can, or maintain a constant alert status as you're going through the woods, and you should be fine. The English take a little while to figure this out, but they learn and they adapt, and they take the tactics and strategies they have in Europe that work against these types of foes, and they use them here, and they prove to be extremely effective, especially since most of us here speak English, not Algonquin. Now, I can talk to you all about the weapon until I'm blue in the face, but you guys want to see it work, right? Yeah. You want to see it go off again, right? Yeah. I was yeah. not excited at all. You want to see it go off, go off again, right? Yeah. All right. Now, before I can fire it again, I have to load it. And I'm going to go through the loading steps with you. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it. What I'm going to need, though, is for you to keep your hands off your ears until I tell you. All right? Because if you have your hands on your ears, there's no point in me talking. All right, so I'm going to start with the priming flask. That's this piece right here. The priming flask is filled with priming powder. The priming powder goes into the priming pan. I then cover the pan up, blow it off, cast it off, make sure there's no loose gunpowder that might accidentally blow me up. Then I cast my musket about, and I take a single charge of gunpowder. One shot, pre-measured. Why would I pre-measure my shot? What's the importance of that? Right, so I always have the same amount, so I'm always hitting the target the same place. There's no drop, there's no too much, no too, too much or too little. And on top of that, if I'm in the middle of a battle, 
I hardly want to be spending my time measuring something, do I? Imagine how hard it is just to measure in your kitchen when you're cooking food. Imagine doing that with bullets and arrows flying at you. So, I'm gonna have a pre-measured charge of powder, load that directly down the barrel. I would then pull a bullet out of my pouch, right out of my mouth, load it, draw my scouring stick, and ram it down to the back of the musket. At this point, the musket is loaded, but it is not ready to fire. It still requires one more thing. This is a match lock. That means it needs match. That's the rope here in my left hand. This rope's been soaked in gunpowder, vinegar, and water, and boiled at a high temperature for a while. That's gonna be slow burning fuse. As that slow burning fuse touches gunpowder, what happens to the gunpowder? It, it explodes. And the powder in the pan will explode, travel through a small hole, and ignite the powder inside the barrel. When that goes off, it'll push the ball down the barrel at about 600 miles an hour. Ah. That is how a musket works. If you want to cover your ears, this is the time to do so. Again, uh, balls. I'm scared. Like yeah, I don't want to work. Hey! 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 Hey!